Okay, welcome to the morning after coffee session. I have a great pleasure to present Professor Karoj Szymon from Budapest University of Technology and Economics. And uh, he will speak on quantization dimension for fractals of overlapping construction. Uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, Krzysztof, for the introduction and also to the organizers uh, for inviting me. I haven't worked much in my life uh, about uh, Julia sets. Uh, uh, and actually, what I'm going to talk today, it is uh, a completely new topic uh, uh, to me. Uh, also, the very first uh, result I collaborated, uh, whatever new result I, I will say it is uh, joint with uh, Mrinal uh, County, uh, Roy Chaudhry uh, uh, from uh, uh, Texas. And uh, uh, he is actually uh, uh, present here. And he gave a talk some 10 uh, months ago uh, at a conference about quantization dimension. I had never known anything before that. I worked mostly on fractals with overlapping constructions. And then there were some open questions related uh, to fractals with overlapping constructions in the, same, in the, in the theory of quantization dimension. And, and that's why uh, we together started to work uh, 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 on this uh, topic. And uh, we had some progress. And I would like to report about that. But before doing that, I would like to give a little uh, introduction uh, uh, about this field. Uh, so uh, what is quantization? It originates from signal processing. And uh, uh, it, it means that a signal, uh, it, it is discretizing signals, basically. So in mathematics, quantization is the best. This is very important what I'm saying now. The best approximation of the Borel probability measure. So we can imagine it is a continuous measure and uh, either singular, mostly singular, uh, singular but continuous measure. And we would like to approximate it with discrete probability measures, which discrete probability measures are supported by endpoints. And we would like to approximate it as well as possible. And we would like to know how well we can approximate a measure uh, which is uh, supported by an uncountable set with, with a discrete measure. Basically, this is. Uh, uh, and then there are a number of uh, fields uh, where uh, this uh, uh, theory is uh, 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 applied. Uh, information theory, cluster analysis, numerical integration, stochastic processes, mathematical models in economy. I just like to ask the organizers, could you please tell me when am I supposed to finish the talk? Because it started a little later. So when am I, how, how, when, when, when so do I support? A quarter past uh, noon. A quarter past noon. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. A quarter past noon. OK, uh, thank you. So uh, so this is, uh, 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 these are fields uh, what I found in a book that they they uh, use it. I I am not an applied person. So when when I said that uh, we would like to approximate a continuous measure with with uh, discrete measures, then approximate it means that we would like to have it close in a certain distance. Now, what is the distance? It is the Wasserstein counter, which LR metric. You don't need to learn. If you if you don't know what it means, because uh, uh, we will not uh, so so uh, this definition will not be used. Uh, but this is a very important metric to measure uh, the distance of uh, two pro uh, border probability measures mu and nu. Uh, both of them has uh, r uh, uh, this 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 r. Uh, so so the integral. But I forgot to write it is. Uh, that the integral of x raised to the power r d nu x and d mu x uh, supposed to be finite. So you have two measures like this, and then you can measure the distance with this Wasserstein contour, contour which LR metric. Here is r, where r is supposed to be between, in between zero and infinity. And then uh, you consider all probability measures on RD uh, times RD, such that the marginals are mu and nu. So M is a measure. This, this uh, interesting M is a probability measure with marginals mu 
and nu. And there you compute this uh, R norm uh, uh, in this way. And then you take the infimum. This is the uh, wasserstein kantorovich metric LR metric. And uh, in the special case, when R is equal to one, then you get the kantorovich rubenstein metric in dynamical system theory. Everybody have used several times this metric. This is just a special case of the previous metric. But we don't need to keep uh, in mind this definition. This is just a, 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 a natural way to, to measure the distance of two uh, measures. Namely, uh, given a probability measure mu, this is the one which will be approximated on RD, and the number which is positive and finite, and the natural number, uh, this e refers to the n, uh, so that uh, we will uh, uh, approximate this measure with another measure uh, uh, which is supported on n points. Now, the n's quantization error of order R, this R refers to the Wasserstein R matrix. So this R will appear throughout the, the, the talk. You can imagine that R is equal to two. Two is a good choice of R. If you don't want to be bothered with R, whenever I say R, please think of two, for example, that's good. And then, so here is R, it's okay. And then N, because uh, we would like to approximate by a measure which is supported on N points. And E stands for error. And mu stands for the measure which is approximated. Now, the good thing is uh, that this error, uh, which is the best, you, you see this uh, formula, that it turns out that this error, which is defined by this nice uh, infimum, this error, gives you the infimum uh, of uh, do, uh, between the, 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 the infimum of distances between mu and measures which are supported uh, on n points. So this error defined in, in this way, it is actually the best approximation of mu by measures uh, supported on n points. That's why this en uh, uh, R mu has a very, very important uh, 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 role in this talk. One more time, this gives the best approximation, the best approximation of mu uh, by measure supported on n points. And this best approximation, it can be proven that this best approximation given by this formula. So this is an important formula. Let's try to understand what is this formula. We take sets, subsets of RD with cardinality not exceeding N. And for each of these subsets, so I would draw here such a set. Uh, let me say this is A1, this is A2, this is A3. And now, now N is equal to three in this example. And what you do, this is alpha. So alpha is just A1, A2, a three, this is alpha. Okay, and then what you do it is that you pick a point X and uh, uh, you would like to uh, measure the distance of X uh, to, the, uh, to the closest point among these. So, so what we do it is that we take the distance between X and this set, it means that we take the closest point of the set, the closest point of the set, and then this will be dx alpha. And then for this dx alpha, which is a function, it's a real valued function, and for this on Rd, and for this real valued function, you can just take the R norm. And then uh, you consider uh, uh, this R norm, and, and you would like to uh, compute the infimum uh, for all possible uh, sets alpha, uh, which have cardinality at most n, that's all. So this is this E and R mu. So, so in, uh, in reality, what we do it is that if we have these points uh, A1, A2, A R, then we draw lines somehow. Uh, uh, so, so we divide uh, uh, this into regions, and in each region, uh, uh, we, we would like to compute uh, which is the point we are closest. So for example, here, this is the closest point. And then 
if x is here, then uh, this is the closest point. And, and then uh, basically this approximating measure is, uh, is, is computed in, in the following way that you have these points A1, A2, A3, and then it gives you somehow a partition that uh, on this uh, uh, part of the partition, uh, this is the point which is closest on this part of the partition. This is the closest point. And on this part of the partition, this is the closest point. And you have the measure mu. And uh, these points somehow inherit. So these points uh, uh, inherit the measure of their domain. And in this way, if you know uh, these so-called centers, A1, A2, H3, if you know these centers, then you know what should be the approximating measure. Of course, it's difficult to know what these points are. And in this talk, we are not going to uh, uh, deal with uh, the trying to find uh, the, the, the best uh, 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 way of choosing these centers. Uh, my my co-author, um, Rinal, uh, 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 has done some work in, in some papers, but in this talk, we will not address that question. So, so this is basically uh, the, the error, the end quantization error. We, uh, here is an infimum. The infimum is attained. So actually, this infimum is a minimum in, in all nice cases. Uh, now, uh, we would like to introduce the upper and lower quantization dimension for the measure. These are these frightening formulas. And for the first glance, it would take too much time to absorb what they say. So let me come back to that a little later. And for the first, I would just say that if this lower and upper quantization dimension uh, gives you the same, so the limit the lim soup, actually both of them are the limit, then the common value is the quantization dimension. Uh, and then we say that the quantization dimension exists. But I believe this formula, that the blue formula, is the right way to understand uh, the meaning of the quantization dimension. So very roughly speaking, uh, I would write it down. If uh, the quantization dimension dr mu is equal to one third, then very, very roughly speaking, it means that this error, the n's quantization error, we know that as n tends to infinity, the n quantization error tends to zero. But how fast uh, does it tends to zero? It, uh, it tends to zero like n to the one over n to the power three. So if it was one third, then one over n to the power three. This is not quite true. Uh, well, I mean, you need to write here log, but then uh, it's more complicated. Uh, uh, you, you, you can keep in mind that if uh, the, the quantization dimension is one third, then this error between the best approximation of a measure by another measure supported by n points and the measure, the distance between this original measure and best, best approximating measure supported by n point, then it, it goes down to zero by n, like one over n raised to the power three if the quantization dimension was one over three. And the same thing is written in a more uh, exact and more precise form over here, uh, uh, but just uh, difficult to read it. Uh, uh, that, that's why probably this is good to remember. Now, this is a good definition of dimension. Those who have seen that, I believe everybody in the audience have, are, are familiar with the definition of Hausdorff uh, dimension. And in the Hausdorff dimension, if you choose an exponent smaller than the Hausdorff dimension of the set, bigger than the Hausdorff dimension, then something drops uh, from infinity to zero. And some, some a similar effect happens here. So you just consider this n raised to the power one over t. This is t, and t is smaller than the lower quantization dimension. So if you choose a t which is smaller than the lower quantization dimension, then this limit is equal to infinity. But the if the limit is equal to infinity, clearly, lim if is infinity, 
the limit I emphasize because after, if you take an S, which is bigger than the lower quantization di uh, dimension, then you just have this limb inf. So you don't have limb, but you, you have limb inf equal to zero, but still it jumps from infinity to zero. And the same about the upper quantization dimension, you just need to change the limb inf to limb uh, soup. This is a this is a good characterization from Klaff and Lushogi. I, I don't know how to pronounce exactly Lushogi. Uh, uh, I, 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 this is my approximation. Uh, so uh, uh, and then uh, we would like to somehow uh, compare this quantization dimension of the measure with other dimensions of the measure. Before going further, uh, I would like to tell you what is the host of dimension of a measure. So if you are given a measure. Uh, then you can define the upper and lower host of dimension. Here is the upper host of dimension is going to be considered. And this means very roughly speaking that you take the host of dimension of sets of full measure and you consider uh, this is full measure, which means uh, that uh, uh, the complementary uh, has measure uh, zero. So the complementer has measure zero. Okay, uh, so this is the host of dimension of the measure and don't define the packing dimension. I, I don't have time for that, but never, nevertheless, we would like to com uh, compare the quantization dimension, which is roughly speaking this, uh, to, to other dimensions of the measure. And then it turns out it was proven by uh, Perzenberger and uh, uh, in, in a paper for r is equal to two, and in the general case for uh, by Graf and uh, Lusky, uh, that if you increase uh, this value r, then uh, both the lower and the upper dimension are going to increase, and the maximum value is the upper uh, or the lower uh, box counting dimension of k, where k is the support of the measure. So the measure is supposed to be in this paper, in this uh, CRM, a measure, probability measure with compact support K. And then we can give an upper bound on uh, both the lower and upper uh, dimension of this. Now, perhaps more interesting, the lower uh, uh, bound. So the lower bound for the lower correlation dimension is uh, this uh, measure, a host of measure uh, or, or host of dimension of the measure and uh, for the upper coloration dimension, the, the, the packing dimension of the measure. If you don't know what is the packing dimension, it's always bigger than equal to the, the host of dimension. So it, then, then it doesn't say much for you. But there is another interesting uh, statement that if the measure is absolute continuous Borel a probability measure on RT, uh, then the correlation dimension, uh, no, sorry, uh, no. whenever I say correlation dimension, sorry, it's a typo. I want to say quantization dimension. I have worked a lot on correlation dimensions, but so I, I confuse it. I don't want to speak about correlation mm -hmm. dimension in this talk. Every correlation dimension should be substituted because quantization. So the quantization dimension is, is, is a full, so it's RT, uh, and then it has full quantization dimension if the measure. So, so this question, what is the quantization dimension? It's uh, interesting only for measures which are uh, a singular uh, measure, uh, just uh, continuous singular measures. So I would like to talk about uh, uh, self-similar iterative function systems. I, I believe uh, most of you know a lot about that, but I just like to briefly go through that. So self-similar iterative function system, SS, IFS, self-similar and iterative function system. On now, RD, I pardon? Pardon? Uh, pardon? Uh, uh, so the, uh, uh, this is a finite list uh, of strict uh, uh, contractions on RD uh, with contraction ratios lambda one, lambda m. So I just like to write it here uh, to remind us S1, Sm, so M always stands the number of the function, and then lambda 1, lambda M are the contractions. So uh, con contractions. So these lambda i are always from 0, 1. Okay, so these are the, the, the contractions, and uh, we write capital lambda 
for the attractor. So this is what remains uh, after infinitely many iteration, it, iterations, it is there. Now there is something very important, which is the similarity dimension of this iterated function system. The similarity dimension uh, can be bigger than one, even if uh, the, the whole system is on the line. Uh, so lambda one, uh, we get the similarity dimension if we, if we uh, solve uh, this equation uh, plus uh, lambda m, these are the contraction ratios, s uh, is equal to one. So the solution of this system is s, which is the similarity dimension of uh, the iterated function system. Okay, uh, and this is a good, uh, uh, a good, uh, uh, this is this is related to the host of dimension of the attractor because the host of dimension of the attractor is more than equal to the minimum of the dimension of the space and the, the similarity dimension itself. So this is the similarity dimension of the attractor. We will consider also self-similar measures. These are the most natural measures associated to the self-similar iterated function systems. Uh, uh, for a self-similar system, we need a probability vector. So the components are from 0, 1, and the components add up to 1. That's why it is a probability vector. And then uh, this uh, uh, self-similar iterated function system, which is sometimes parameterized by S and P. S is this iterated uh, system, and P is the probability vector. Uh, so uh, this is defined as the measure. Uh, I, if I, I can write it down in an alternative way. So nu is equal to the average, you see, Pi is a probability vector, so the average of the push forward measures of itself. This is the uh, self-similar measure, and this is the self-similar measure which is associated to the iterated uh, function system uh, S and the probability vector P. Uh, now, for such a system, uh, for such a measure, also we have a similarity dimension, which is somehow in, in good cases, when there are not much overlaps in between the cylinders, uh, then the, the similarity dimension of this, uh, of this uh, self-similar measure is given by this formula, uh, uh, log pi i, log pi i, this is uh, the entropy and divided by the Yapunov exponent, uh, which is one to m pi i log r i. Uh, so this is the uh, similarity dimension uh, for the measure. And then uh, we need, uh, and, and these dimensions uh, are, are give, give really the dimension of the measure or, or the dimension of the attractor if the cylinders are well separated. But there, there is one more thing that I like to mention, the natural measure. The natural measure is a measure which is defined uh, with, uh, with the probabilities, uh, which are the most relevant probabilities. So this is lambda one raised to the power s and so on lambda m raised to the power s. Uh, uh, this, this uh, uh, where, where s was, you see here, if you have a look at here, these numbers lambda 1 raised to the power lambda m raised to the power s, they add up to 1. So they, these numbers can form a probability vector. And this is the natural uh, uh, and, and for uh, 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 the corresponding measure is the natural measure. And uh, uh, the, the similarity dimension uh, of the natural measure is actually the similarity dimension of the system. So that's why it's interesting. Uh, this is, uh, yeah. Uh, so this, uh, this gives uh, the possible maximum value of uh, 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 the, the dimension of a uh, of of uh, of a similar self-similar uh, measure. 
Okay. Uh, so this is the natural measure. So so uh, all of these are in, uh, uh, play important role if the cylinders are well separated. The cylinders are well separated if the so-called open set condition holds. Uh, open set condition holds means that uh, there is a, an open set uh, such that each of the mappings sent uh, uh, this open set into itself and uh, the images uh, of, of, uh, uh, of, of the set with any two distinct mappings are disjoint. This means basically that the cylinders are well separated. Uh, now, if we have this open set condition, uh, then uh, I, I just like to mention first that if we have the open set condition, so the cylinders are well separated, open set condition holds that the Hausdorff dimension of the attractor is equal to the similarity dimension and the uh, Hausdorff dimension of the measure uh, is uh, equal to uh, the similarity dimension of the measure. So this is really, uh, it says that everything happens as, as, as they have to happen. Now, uh, it was Graf and uh, Lusky in 2001 uh, who proved the following. If the iterated function system, self-similar iterated function system satisfies the open set condition, uh, then the quantization dimension exists and the quantization dimension can be computed from this formula. Uh, let me dwell on this formula number five a little bit. We know that uh, P1, uh, P2, and so on, Pm form a, a, a probability uh, vector. Uh, so if you add them up, then you get exactly one. Now, if you multiply these people with uh, these numbers, and these numbers are smaller than one, so you multiply always with numbers which are smaller than one, then what you get uh, M and this is R. So what you get, it will be smaller than one. But what you can do now it is, then you can raise these numbers to a certain power. Let me say you raise them power T. Uh, what is T? T needs to be in between uh, zero and one. Why? Because if t equals zero, then the sum would be bigger than one. Because then uh, uh, it's cl clear that the sum is bigger than one if t is equal to zero. We have we have just seen that if t is equal to one, then the sum would be smaller than one. So you can choose a t in such a way that the sum uh, gives you exactly one. So, and this t needs to be in between zero and one. And after you have chosen this t, uh, what you can do it is that you can define dr as uh, rt divided by minus t, uh, which is uh, the same uh, that uh, dr is the number which appears over here. So this is uh, the quantization dimension in, in the case when the open set condition holds. And if uh, the measure is the natural measure, so with the natural probabilities, this is the natural measure, then the quantization dimension gives you back uh, the similarity dimension uh, of the system. Good. Uh, now, um, Whatever I have said until now, it was in RD, but I would like to choose to, to the real line. And in the real line, it's better to say that these lambda i's are not necessarily positive. They are in between minus one and plus one, but they cannot be zero because the contraction cannot be zero. And here, when you write down the similarity dimension of the measure, therefore, we need to write uh, absolute value of the contraction. So we come to this uh, setting and uh, we would like to see what happens if the open set condition uh, doesn't hold. This is a difficult question and uh, this talk is uh, pretty much like uh, supposed to be about that. So what do we know? <laughs> what we know it is that the Hausdorff dimension of the measure is smaller than equal to the minimum 
uh, of one and the similarity dimension of the measure. And this was the similarity dimension of the measure. Here is the similarity dimension of the measure. So you can compute the right side completely exactly. Uh, OK. Uh, so we cannot uh, uh, decide what happens in each cases if, uh, uh, if you have heavy overlap, so you do not have open set condition, uh, but we can say something. So, so uh, we can consider instead of one self-similarity function system, a family of iterated function systems, what we call translation family, because it means that we fix the contraction. So this red, uh, contractions are fixed, we fix, that's all, fixed. And then we consider the blue translations as parameters. So they, because there are M, M uh, like Matthias or whatever uh, 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 mappings, therefore uh, this translation form a vector in the M dimension of space. And this is the parameter space. Now, um, there is a, a, a Hoffman theorem uh, which says uh, that uh, this in, in this yellow formula, uh, actually you have equality. So the yellow formula holds always, yellow formula holds always, but in the yellow formula, you have equality, if not always, but for most of the T's. So for the, the exceptional uh, set of T's for which you do not have equality here, form a set in Rm, a set of at most m minus one packing dimension. If you do not know back this packing dimension, you can think of that at most m minus one host of dimension, or you can think, simply think of that uh, for Lebesgue almost all t, you have equality in the yellow formula. This follows from a very deep and very, very important theorem of Hochman. Now, uh, uh, we need to recall from CRM 1.1, and now we go back to CRM 1.1 if I find it. Uh, it is this. Uh, so, so we know from this CRM, so we know from this CRM that uh, the lower and upper uh, uh, dimensions, uh, quantization dimensions, are in between these uh, two people which are written here. Uh, so, so if you put this uh, line together with the previously mentioned Hoffman theorem, then what we get it is uh, that actually for every vector of contractions and uh, 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 almost every translations, for every probability, what you have it is, this is pretty much like almost surely what you have, it is that the, the lower and upper uh, quantization dimension are in between is, in, in these two uh, uh, values that you can uh, actually compute. And, and that's uh, already more than nothing. So it's, it's already good uh, to know that. Um, and in the, in the case of the natural measure, so when P is this natural measure, which is here, then the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So in the case of the natural measure, we exactly know that for almost all translations, uh, the uh, quantization dimension is minimum one and S for almost all translations. But these almost all translations are to avoid the situations when we have uh, uh, complete overlaps. And in the last uh, 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 third of my talk, I would like to turn to the, that uh, the field what uh, we, we investigated with Rinald, uh, uh, Reutsch, Hovrudri, uh, that, uh, uh, what happens if you have if you have uh, uh, strong essential overlaps? Uh, it does not happen for most of the uh, uh, translation. But what can you say if it happens? That was the the question uh, what we wanted to understand. Uh, our aim was to understand what happens in the case of the weak separation. If the weak separation property holds, we could not get. Exactly that, we, we, we just got 
in a, a special case, but I would like to tell you uh, something about the weak separation property. So uh, I would like to explain it in a special case, in a special case when the self-similar IFS is on the line, but not only on the line, but all the contractions are the same. We call this situation homogeneous. So we just consider homogeneous system, all the contraction ratios are the same. Uh, in this case, if you take the cylinder intervals, so you write SI, so I is uh, just a finite vector of the indices, and uh, SI is SI composition SIN, and then N cylinder is I, uh, which is SI implied on uh, capital I, where capital I is the smallest uh, interval which contains the attractor. So you have your attractor, that is the smallest interval which contains it, this is I, and then uh, if you go to level N, you see exponentially many level N cylinders, which are I uh, obtained by SI uh, applied on, on this big interval I. So uh, what is uh, the weak separation property in this very special case? The weak separation property says that if you take uh, two n-tuples, i and j, which are different, then there can be two the possibilities. Although in spite of the fact that the labels are different, the corresponding intervals totally coincide, or this happens, which means, you, you know, they have the same lengths because this is a, a, a homogeneous system. So every level and cylinder have lengths lambda to the power n times the lengths of this interval i. So the, the lengths, uh, they share the same lengths, but their intersection, which is an interval or empty set, it has lengths compared to their common lengths uh, smaller than one minus epsilon. So the two interval either totally coincide or relative to their size, uh, they cannot be too close to each other. This is the weak separation property. I just like to mention that under the same setup, so when we are on the line and consider these kinds of systems, the open set condition simply means that we do not allow this. So when the open set condition, then this is not allowed, the open set condition is this. So if you take two intervals of level n, then relative to their common length, they cannot be too close to each other. This is the open set inter and the weak separation properties. When you allow that they can be, uh, they can totally overlap, or if they don't, then they are relatively far away from each other. To understand this, uh, uh, we would like to, to understand what is the, uh, uh, quarter, uh, quantization dimension under the weak separation property. And we have managed to do it in a special example. And this example is uh, derived from the uh, famous 0, 1, 3 problem. Uh, so basically, we consider an iterated function system, which uh, is uh, homogeneous. So all uh, contraction ratios are one third. And the translations are either zero or one, not two, but three. Zero, one, or three, okay? And the similarity dimension, very easy to see, it is equal to one, because you have three contractions, each of them contracts with one third. Now, the interesting thing in this example is, I would actually show both the second and the third iterate. The interesting thing, you see here are the first cylinders. These are the first cylinders. And then uh, there are two second cylinders, namely the first second cylinder in the second in this, and the last second cylinder in this, which totally coincide. So this interval and that interval, the blue and the red, totally coincide. And uh, but otherwise, there are intervals which intersect each other. But compared to their lengths, they are relatively far away from each other. Or if you have a look at the third iterate, you see it better. You can see that there are these intervals which are totally coincide. This blue, this blue, that blue, and there is something which intersect each of them, but not very close to them. There are lots of lots of intersections, and we considered uh, this uh, this family. 
and uh, iterated function uh, uh, self-similar measures for this. So this is a special case of weak separation property, and uh, we wanted to compute uh, we wanted to compute the uh, uh, quantization dimension. Now, as I mentioned here, these two intervals totally coincide. So one of them is surplus. But even if you throw away one of them, uh, still you still have intersection. There is a paper of Zoo I need to mention uh, uh, who, who considered uh, Zoo uh, considered. Uh, uh, iterated function system self-similar when it is possible that there is overlap, but in this way, so that the first intervals totally coincide and otherwise there is no intersection. Uh, uh, but in our case, you cannot get rid of the intersection even if you throw away uh, and, and, and so computed the uh, quantization dimension for this is a very, very recent uh, result. Uh, but in in, our, in 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 the typical typically, if you have a weak separation property, then no, this is the case. So you cannot go to a higher iterate and get rid of uh, uh, some iterates, and then then you get a non-overlapping system. You you cannot arrange that because of this phenomenon. But you see over here, even if you are on the third level, there will be this interval which uh, intersects these intervals. So so what we do it is that. Either one zero or zero three can be uh, uh, thrown away, and this matrix stands for when you throw away zero three and the blue one, then you throw away one zero. Now, which of the two? Because we will use subsheet of finite type, and which we need to use, uh, it depends uh, on the probabilities. So our probability vector p is p zero. P1 and P3. And if P1 uh, is a, uh, P1 is bigger than or equal to P3, then you need to use this matrix and this subshift of finite type. Otherwise, you use the other one. But for symmetry, we always assume that P1 is bigger than or equal to P3 in the remaining seven minutes. And uh, then uh, we use uh, the subshift of finite type sigma A. Uh, which consists of those uh, infinite sequences uh, from 0, 1, 3, such that ik, ik plus oh, 1 is k plus 1 is not equal to 0, 3. So, so we consider this sigma a, and uh, uh, this tn is just the length of n. Uh, the, the Tn is just the sequences of lengths n which are allowed uh, in this in this uh, uh, sigma a. So Tn is is just the the, the, the sequences of lengths n within uh, uh, sigma a. Uh, and then, unfortunately, we need some further notation. What we do here in I i. It is, uh, I can show it uh, on the third approximation. Uh, so for example, if you take this third approximation, uh, then you, you choose an element of, uh, of, the, of, of the finite words above sigma a, and uh, uh, you, you just uh, take the collection of uh, basically uh, the, the collection of those intervals uh, uh, which uh, those uh, labels for which uh, the, the labeled interval coincide uh, uh, with the interval which co uh, corresponds to this i. Uh, and, and so this is i i, but i is uh, just from these allowed sequences. And then what we do it is and that uh, this is very important, psi i is just the sum uh, from this eta from i i. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, it, it, it are not from I, I but from uh, Tn. No, uh, it, it, it are from I, I, uh, P eta. P eta is, is the corresponding probability. So, so for example, if uh, you have an interval I1, I2, I3, uh, then the corresponding probability P I1, P I2, P I3, is just pi1 
PI2 and PI3. Okay, uh, so this, this is the corresponding probability. We add them up and uh, uh, we consider uh, this uh, pressure function uh, over, over this um, alphabet, uh, uh, subshift of finite type. And uh, uh, what we need to do it is that with this, uh, with this pressure function, uh, we form another pressure function, which looks like this, this PT minus RT log three, and then it has a unique zero, which is T zero. And, uh, and then, uh, uh, so I, I just collected here uh, all of the notations uh, one more time. So uh, A is alphabet is the zero one three and uh, TN, is just the length, uh, 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 the, the this, uh, collection of sequences of lengths n such that it never happened that zero is followed by three. And uh, uh, for for every uh, word uh, from from for every finite word, uh, this is not exactly for every finite word. I should have written from every t n. So it it uh, should be i. Uh, from Tn. So this should be Tn, which is defined over there. Uh, we define this calligraphic ii, where we collected uh, those uh, symbols such that the corresponding intervals coincide. And we define this uh, psi, which is also over there, where the corresponding uh, interval coincide, then we, we take uh, uh, somehow sum up the probabilities for those intervals which coincide. And then we compute this pressure function and uh, uh, T zero is chosen such that this pressure function is equal to R times T zero log three. And then we define uh, key R uh, uh, in, uh, with this formula. And the, our theorem is that the quantization dimension is, is equal to this uh, uh, key R. Uh, so uh, this is uh, just uh, an, an example. Uh, what can we do if uh, if we have uh, the weak separation property in a in a special case? And we believe that our method can be ex extended to the to the weak separation property case. I have three more minutes, so during which I like to say a couple of words. Uh, about what kind of methods we use from dynamical systems. Uh, so we actually, what we need to define, it is an appropriate uh, uh, Gibbs measure on the symbolic space uh, uh, sigma A. Uh, we, we need an appropriate Gibbs measure. And uh, what we have, it is just a, a potential, something like this psi. This psi is not defined on sigma A. The psi is defined on finite words of sigma A. A psi is not on sigma A because then you could use the Bowen theorem, uh, the, the theorem from Bowen books about the existence of invariant uh, ergodic uh, Gibbs measure, what we need. Uh, but, but here the situation is different uh, because we have this only on the finite words. And we say that the potential is weak quasi multiplicative if it is a, a quasi multiplicative on the one hand, but you have this kind of opposite side of uh, inequality. If you insert a word whose length does not exceed a, a, a pre-given fixed number. So if this two holds, then we say that the potential is quasi multiplicative. And there was a theorem of Fang that if you have a quasi multiplicative potential, then there is an ergodic invariant Gibbs measure, which uh, uh, just an ergodic Gibbs or, uh, invariant Gibbs measure. Now, unfortunately, our potential psi is not quasi multiplicative. It is not even uh, uh, sub multiplicative. So this is not a good potential. So we need to define another potential. We need to define another potential uh, with, with the help of this function psi, which appears everywhere. And uh, with the help of that, we need to define another potential, which has the same pressure function on the one hand 
and which is eventually quasi-multiplicative. And then we have this uh, ergodic invariant Gibbs measure, and we do uh, the, the usual tricks uh, what people do in the theory of quantization dimension. I hope that I finish it on time. So this is, and thank you very much for your attention, something like this. Uh, 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 here are some further. Okay, thank you very much for your perfect talk. Are there any questions from the audience? Balash, Michal, don't you have questions? From online? Uh, maybe I have a question. Can, can you tell uh, very shortly why this quantization dimension is interesting, the, some, some application? Oh, I, I do not know application, but there are a number of uh, uh, fields when they use it. And I think that the interest comes from the fact that uh, people want to approximate a, a measure, which is a continuous measure uh, with uh, a discrete measure. So the measures which are, are supported on uh, 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 finitely many points. And, uh, and that's, uh, I, I, I believe it's uh, plausible that it has uh, interest and uh, people are in, can be interesting in it. And there are a number of fields uh, uh, what I try to, to collect when uh, applied people are interested in this kind of approximation of the measures. Okay, thank you once more. Thank you. And the next talk uh, will be on time in five minutes. <laughs>